Two years ago, a tabloid reporter calling herself Fleet Street Fox started a blog. The phone hacking scandal had recently erupted. Lord Justice Leveson was soon to start his inquiry into the press. And newspapers weren't just publishing the news, they were the news. Foxy's blog and her tweets set out to show what the newspaper industry looked like from the inside and perhaps to prove that reporters aren't all the rapacious slime bags without shame or principles that they're sometimes depicted as. Now, she's written a book. It's called The Diaries of a Fleet Street Fox, and she's outed herself as Susie Boniface, once a reporter on the Sunday Mirror, now a columnist for its Daily Sister. We invited her here to New Broadcasting House in central London so we could meet the author. Susie Boniface, what kind of book is this? Because it's sort of fact and fiction, and it's like but not entirely the same as the blog for which you're most famous. Yeah, well, it's basically, it's as true a story as I could possibly get. Everything that's in there is stuff that I know about, it's happened to me, and it's happened to my friends. These aren't just anecdotes from people down the pub that have been passed around 15 times. This is the truth, but uh, it has been varnished, it has been embellished, it's had widdly bits put on it, um, because I couldn't write person X did this to person Y, I have to give, give those anecdotes to some randomly generated characters who do not bear any real resemblance to people in real life. But the basic thrust of this, which is, it's about your divorce, which was extremely bitter and rancorous, and was the subject of an earlier blog that you published under a different name a few years ago. Yes, well, when I um, started writing the book originally as a blog online, I had to do it anonymously. It was about me and my personal life. And um, when you're a news reporter, you don't have a right to express your personal life in the open. It makes your job very, very difficult. So I had to put, do it anonymously under a, a pen name and everything, so on and so forth. And what the Fleet Street Fox blog that we know did was give a kind of insider's perspective on what it was like to be a tabloid reporter at a time when, frankly, tabloid reporters were getting, to use the phrase, an absolutely terrible press. Yeah, we had an absolute pacing for a couple of years, and I think I was just really lucky that it happened kind of when there was a bit of a zeitgeisty moment. People were terribly interested in what was going on with tabloid newspaper reporters. There are 30,000 people who work in print journalism in the UK. There's a couple of dozen people who've been arrested and charged. Um, most of us are just normal idiots like everybody else, and I really wanted to say that there is another side to the story. There is something else that goes on behind what goes on in the newspapers and that's the really fun exciting interesting bit that when I meet people generally in my you know normal life that they want to hear about yeah you say um, they're ordinary people they're normal people but um, I mean some of the things that they get up to you <laughs> substituted the, the sort of um, stereotype of the sleazy hack who'll stop at nothing for an, a, a, another stereotype which is of the hard drinking chaotic personal life um, really black humor I mean it's a stereotype of another kind is it any, actually any truer I think so, but it's not. Um, it, it, we are ordinary people doing an extraordinary job, and it's the job that gives you the black humour. Police officers, nurses, and doctors would say the same thing, um, and it's the the job which perhaps to push you towards alcoholism rather than any other kind of addiction. Because we we deal with other addictions every day in our daily lives. We generally stay away from serious drug or sex addiction, that kind of thing. Um, alcoholism is is the best thing that which we can usually use as a crutch to get through our lives, because otherwise we just give up entirely after you've been a journalist very well. Um, this is a very funny book, um, but the humour is very, very black. What is it that drives journalists, particularly newspaper journalists, to be quite so sardonic and, and black, do you think? I think anyone would be, if they dealt with life and death and people at their most extreme, if we're dealing with burglars and rapists and drug addicts and Kerry Katona on a regular basis, you soon decide that you have to just start taking the mick out of things. I mean, I, at one point I was covering um, the tsunami in 2004 in Thailand, Burma, Indonesia. I spent about three weeks away from home and my then husband. Um, I was uh, dealing with bodies all day, every day, horrible smells, mortuaries, grieving relatives. It was horrendous, traumatic business. And when you're a journalist, you have two halves of your brain. One half of your brain is a normal human being that says, this is all horrible. You don't need to be here. You don't know anyone here. Get on a plane, go back home to your loved ones, be somewhere else. And the other half of your brain is saying, this is amazing. I'm definitely getting the front page. Let's try and find some more bodies tomorrow. And the only way you can really cope with that slightly schizoid personality, I think, is just to occasionally just sit down and 
get inside a bottle of something because and make sense of it a little bit. The Fleet Street Fox blog started in early 2011, just as the phone hacking scandal was gathering pace, and then we had the Leveson inquiry and so on and so forth. What in the blog was the story that you thought wasn't being told, that you thought ought to be told? Well, one of the most popular posts I wrote was actually about super injunctions. This is before News of the World shut down, and we were all still very, very interested in, in other people's private lives. And there was a huge scandal about what we weren't being allowed to know about Ryan Giggs and Jamie Clarkson and Andrew Marr and lots of other people uh, and but no one was allowed to know what it was that we weren't allowed to know so there was a big debate going on about it um, but it was very tricky to have the debate without yourself breaking the law newspapers couldn't report on it um, and I found a, a way of saying well look there are roughly 80 or 90 high profile super injunctions involving high profile people you know three quarters of them are about adultery six of them involve medical staff and just kind of breaking down what they were about in a way without actually breaching any of them or identifying the people behind them and that you know that just got the biggest possible hits that I think I've ever had on the website it was absolutely massive and why, people were people so, why, were, why were people so keen to know because I called it you're not allowed to read this <laughs> <laughs> so it hit straight through the roof. Um, we've had the Leveson inquiry, Leveson report, and now we've got the aftermath and so on. In your view, has that got us anywhere? Are we, are we, are we in a better place now than we were three or four years ago? I don't think so. I don't think the Leveson inquiry was held at the right time. I think it should have been held after the associated court cases, like most judge-led inquiries should be. Um, I don't think that you heard both sides or you know, three or four sides of the story, you heard pretty much what it was like to be a victim of being on the end of a press story, but not very much at all from reporters like me because you simply couldn't keep on doing the job. If you had gone to the Leveson inquiry, it'd been very tricky. In a word, are the newspapers any different now as a result of all of, all of this hacking yes. Leveson? They're scared. They're very scared. They're scared of being caught out, they're scared of being sued, their budgets have been cut, they've got fewer reporters. And the biggest thing I think was happened amongst the the 30,000 print journalists and local and national papers that I, when I speak to them, uh, is that morale has taken a massive kicking because most of us weren't involved in this kind of business, most of us simply didn't do it and we're all suffering the effects of what a few bad apples seem to have done to everybody and it's, it's really depressing a lot of people and journalism is already a job where you need a, you know, a level of enthusiasm to do it which almost borders on mental illness and uh, if, if that actually starts getting a kick, if you can make the mentally ill less enthusiastic then it's, you know, seriously in trouble. Susie Boniface, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.